welcome to this pre-concert talk before today's Met Wins concert. I'm Rick Wyman, director and uh, conductor and your host for today's concert. And it's my pleasure to have with me today a distinguished panel of uh, three Met Wins members as well as students who are joining us at today's concert. This is what's really cool about this concert today is that we have some kids from middle school, I shouldn't say kids, they're youth, they're students from middle school who are playing with us on a couple pieces, and then we have high school students who are playing with us on a couple pieces, and it's always really exciting for us. So I thought it would be so fun for us here to hear from each of these students and, and someone from their section on the Metwins players. I'm going to have them introduce each other to you because I think it's cool to hear the range of places that the students are from, uh, as well as the range of uh, professions and things that the Met Wins players do, as well as to talk a little bit about the music we're going to play today and what it's like for them uh, for this experience. So what I thought we'd do first is have um, Met Wins members introduce their student section member who's standing next to them. So let's do that first, and we'll start with Emily's going to introduce her uh, partner here. All right. Hi, everyone. This is Amon. He goes to Beverly High School, and he plays the trumpet. And outside of music, he enjoys soccer. Cool. Thanks. Welcome, Amon. We're glad you're here. So yeah, we got our next student here. This is Carl Hart. He is a saxophone player in the eighth grade at Hudson High School, and when not playing music, is big into scouts. Nice. All right. This is Chavez, who's a junior at Bedford High School, um, plays a flute, and um, outside of music, he enjoys reading and hanging out with friends and doing movies. Nice, welcome. This is Evan, and he is a senior at Bedford High School and plays percussion, and he just got into Tufts University to study urban planning and computer science, and also was starring in The Adams Family. Ooh, nice. <laughs> Could you give a round of applause for our student guests that we just met? So here's what I think is really cool. So these students have been playing with us, but they've been playing with people in the Met Wins who are some of them are professional musicians, some of them have other professions, they're all fantastic musicians, and so it's been fun for me to see them meet each other. So I asked the students if they would introduce uh, their section mate here. Uh, so go ahead, start with your, go ahead, yeah. So this is Allison Hannah, and she's in the percussion section, and she teaches music at Davis School, which is an elementary school in Bedford. Nice. Mm -hmm. Um, this is Miss Laura Ross. She is uh, from Arlington, Massachusetts, and she's a radar systems engineer. Wow, mm -hmm. cool. This is, this is Ben. He is from Hopkinton, and he's a fifth grade uh, music educator. Nice. This is Emily. She's from Chelmsford, um, and she works at Trigger Advisor. Nice. What, did, what do you do there, Emily? Uh, I'm payroll manager. Payroll manager, making sure everybody gets paid. That's good. All right, good. All right, round of applause for our um, net wins. And nice job, students, in introducing them. So it's been uh, pretty neat for me to point out to the students that these net wins members have made music an important part of their life throughout adulthood. And that's really cool because sometimes students stop playing music when they finish high school or maybe when they stop playing college. Uh, I run into so many people who tell me, I used to play the flute and I gave it up and it's my biggest regret. So it's always a thrill for me to see and be around these Metwins players who have made it an um, important part of their life to play at a high level. Okay, so I've got a question uh, for the uh, students. What's it been like for you playing in the Met Wins? So they've uh, each come to two rehearsals with us and then they're playing the concert today. So. It's a quick shot that they've each uh, have been playing two pieces with us, but I want to know what it's been like for you. What's it been like? I've really enjoyed it. All the members are really nice, and I've been, it's been fun playing with like a group that's really good at music. <laughs> <laughs> Your school's pretty good, but not as good as the Matt Wins. Is that what it is? Uh, they're pretty close. Okay, they're pretty close. <laughs> pretty close. All right, good, good. That's nice. Thank you. Uh, go ahead. Who we got next here? 
Playing with the Met Winds has been a surreal experience. It's been absolutely amazing. The sound is so full, and it's just amazing. Everyone's so comforting and caring, and it's just overall been a once-in-a-lifetime experience. Hey, cool. Wow, that's a, we need to put that on our website. Thanks. <laughs> and we got marketers in the band that are going to snatch this guy up for he's got a job, right? right good. No, it's definitely been really cool to like play, and it's so funny, Mr. Wyman, when you like correct something, and I'm like, this is when we're sitting in the audience, I'm like, <laughs> if we were playing that in high school, <laughs> there wouldn't have been a correction. It's like these min my, really minute things that it just sounds amazing, so you can't really tell, so it's like a whole new level of music. Nice, cool, thank you. I haven't had the opportunity to play in any concert band setting for a while now, too, so this has been a really, a really cool ensemble to get back into that with. Um, so it's been really fun to play in this ensemble, but also to kind of see and experience what a rehearsal kind of looks like for an ensemble of this caliber, kind of uh, how, uh, kind of as Sheree's was talking, how, we go, how they go about um, making corrections to the music and um, kind of the, how, how the rehearsal was conducted was kind of really interesting for me to see. Well, that's cool. I appreciate those comments because uh, that's insightful for us or me as well because different types of ensembles work differently in their rehearsals, don't they? Uh, I, I've mentioned to the Met Winds a number of times that I've enjoyed going watching Boston Symphony Orchestra rehearsals because they have open dress rehearsals occasionally. And it's, to your point, they're working on things that are much finer than, say, some other groups are, right? So it kind of depends on the group. And so that's neat for me to hear that you've gotten a taste uh, I mean, because that's sort of what I try to do, because these are professional level players, so it's always, and, and they always, I have to make sure that they remind me if I ever step out of sight of this, but my goal is always to make it feel like a professional rehearsal, because they are professional players, and part of my goal for the students has been to have them experience that, and see what that might be like, and what some of the things that we would work on. So cool, I'm glad that some of you uh, experienced that or felt that. Now, I'd love to know from the Met Wins players what it's been like having our student guests join us. Allison, do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so I've had a unique experience with this because I was one of the people on the board that is in charge of getting the student nominations and getting everybody here today with my counterpart, Nicole O'Toole. So it's been really unique for me to especially teaching in a district that many students from our district are here, and many of which I taught when they were young elementary students. I didn't have the luxury of teaching Evan, um, but I did uh, with his sister, so, mm -hmm. and who's also playing with us. So that's kind of cool to see how musicians grow up from when they're small students that I teach at the elementary level and see what they've done with music as they come up to middle school and high school. You must feel proud, Allison. I do, yeah. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so it's, it's always a lot of fun to, to play with the students, and um, I, I like talking to them about you know what their interests are, and sometimes there are students that are, their interests aren't in music, and they're in other areas like science, and of course, as an engineer, I like to kind of let them know that you know you can keep playing you know for the rest of your life if you want to, right? Like you don't have to stop even if you want to major in a science or an engineering field or anything like that. Um, it's cool, and it's interesting um, that that Laura mentions that because. It's always interesting to me when you look at the program and see the professions represented by the MetWinds players. We have a lot of music teachers. We also have a lot of engineers. Something about engineers and music, uh, engineers being good musicians. Uh, or is it because they play music they get into good engineering school? I don't know, or some of both, some of both. Uh, but anyway, yeah, go ahead then. Uh, one of the things I find so impressive about playing with these students is how well they blend in with the ensemble. Uh, you might think that we're playing, you know, we're, we're kind of dumbing down the level of music we're, we're doing or we're adjusting, but really we're just doing what Metwins does. And these guys just come in and fit in so well. It's sitting next to Carl and being like, wow, he's really blending with the section and he's listening to each other. And they're not just playing loud and fast. like. It's sensitive and it's musical and, and really beautiful playing that, that fits with who Metwins are. Bravo, that's nice. Well, that's a tribute to all the students who are playing with us and that's worth it. I love when we have the student concert because the energy that the students bring is just so awesome. And as a student, when I was young, I would have killed for an opportunity to play with a group like this. So it's just cool that they bring that awesome energy in. And I think it's really important for them to see, yeah, that we aren't all, you know, 
professional musicians, um, and that you know people who go to school for something else but keep playing. But I'm the opposite. I went to school for music, but I don't do that as a profession. You have a real job. I have a real job instead. <laughs> I could say that because I've been trying to work in music, right? So, so yeah. So I think it's really important, but it's just so fun to play with them. Nice, nice. All right. So here's the tough question for the students. We'll start. Um, we'll start with you here, Eamon. Um, I've been curious if each of the students could tell me something about the music we're playing today. That could be. You know, just tell us the names of some of the pieces. Tell me something uh, that you've noticed about it. Uh, something about one of the composers, maybe. Or something about the challenges or things that we've been thinking about in trying to pull this music off. Because I think that's always insightful for an audience member to know, what's that musician thinking about? Or what have they been working on to try to, to make this go, right? Sort of like when you see a trapeze artist, if you know a little bit about the process that they went through to get to the fact that they could pull in that routine. So there's a lot of um, space there to consider, but what do, you, what do you got for us? We're playing the Liberty Bell March by John Philip Sousa. It is probably the most marchy sounding piece I've ever played. <laughs> <laughs> and something interesting about it is it was used in Mon Monty Python. Liberty Bell was using Monty Python. Yes. I didn't know that. And can I ask, can I probe that comment about it's the most marchy march you've ever thing played? Yeah. yeah. Why? I don't know, it just sounds like um like what you think of when you think of a march. Ah, okay, so it epitomizes march. Yes. I like it. Okay, well and that's good because that means we're doing something right if if uh, we'll see if the audience agrees after we play it today, right? Okay, good. Anything else? Any other uh, thoughts or observations for the music? Those are good. But if you don't have any more, that's okay. I don't have any more. Either. All right, great. How about uh, Carl? What do you got? For Liberty Bell, um, Liberty, Liberty Bell was very upbeat. It had a, like a driving 6-8 um, beat, and it was just extremely energetic and had lots of energy in it. Um, a few challenges we had with it was at the beginning, um, the dynamics weren't dramatic enough, but eventually we worked through that and it just, it's an amazing piece. I love it. Cool, so I, I appreciate that you mentioned that, Carl, right? Because um, he mentioned dynamics, meaning loud and soft, right? And that was something we were working on in a piece the other day is trying to make sure that that comes across, that there's a little introduction that's really loud, and then it's soft after that, and we want to make sure that that comes across to the audience. So now that he's mentioned it, we'll see if when we play the Liberty Bell, if you all hear that uh, in the audience. So good, good observations. Uh, next. I think there were two things for me. One thing was when playing Meta March, it's really fast, and I remember... So this is Meta March you're referring to, which is the thing we're playing at the end of the concert yes. today, right? Yeah, yeah. I remember cool. coming the first night for rehearsal and we played it and you Mr. Wyman you were like oh we're not taking it as fast as we could have been but and I was like what? <laughs> I think we've slowed it down a little bit since that first rehearsal just so yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so that was a big kind of change is I don't think we always play such up tempo music in the ensembles I've been in. And there is a tendency and correct me if I'm wrong music educators and students to play things maybe slower than originally written because the idea is, oh, these are students and so we need to play it slower. I understand that and sometimes it's funny because I'll, I'll be, be, say, with this group or a student group somewhere and the teacher will come up and say, they need to play this much slower. But then my concern is always, but then you lose the feel of what the piece is about and the slow practice is what they can do at home, right, to figure it out on their own. As a group, I want, I want you to experience what the piece is about. And when I go see the Boston Symphony Orchestra rehearse, they don't say, he doesn't, Anders Nielsen doesn't say, okay, everybody, we're going to do it half the speed so that you can learn your part, right? So it's about that professional performance uh, rehearsal experience. So good observations. Anything else? Um, I was just going to say, you brought in a lot of, like, um, stories when we played the music, and I just enjoyed that. Oh, okay, good. So stories with the music, good, which to me always helps us connect with the music if there is uh, a story that goes with it. So good, I'm glad that was a good experience. Thanks. And then there were two, so about um, Old Home Days, which the piece is sort of a, a testament to the, like, to the Ives' um, childhood nostalgia. And the two things I really liked about rehearsing that piece was one, as Shreya has kind of mentioned, the personal anecdotes that Rick kind of brought in um, relating to the different movements, but also the first rehearsal that we had um, when we were working on that piece, we were all given a sheet 
with um, some of the melodies that are, that are used in the movements um, with lyrics, and we sang through them, and that kind of gave another dimension um, to understanding the music and the, um, kind of the emotions behind each of the different movements since they're so different, which was kind of really cool. Great, and, and so what I want to emphasize, and what, if, we, what, if I was really prepared, we would have done that with the audience today, right? We would have had them sing those songs, we could have let it. But um, in the program, there's a piece by Charles Ives called Old Home Days, and each of those movements are a song that Ives had written for voice and piano. They have words, as you mentioned, and obviously when we play it, you won't hear the song in those words. And so for me, us playing it, we're going to do, do that so much better if we understand the regular song and sing it. Now, if it's London Bridge has fallen down, which is one of the movements, we all know that. But Slow March, which is about um, Ives, it's a song Ives wrote about his dog that died. He wrote it when he was 14. It's helpful to know what those words are, right? So next time, when, when you guys come back, if we have something like that, we'll uh, have the audience uh, uh, teach, uh, we'll teach it to the audience. Okay, so we've got about two minutes. Any questions from the audience for our distinguished panel of students and Met Wins members here? If so, I'm not going to run out there with a the microphone. You're just going to have to stand up and belt it out. Any questions? And it's okay if you don't. But usually what happens in this circumstance is everybody's shy about it, and then one question starts, and everybody goes. So most of you are, are, some of you here right now are parents of these and some of the other students. Part of the reason, I have kids that are similar ages, part of the reason uh, that I wanted to do this is because when my kids go do something and I ask them in the car, hey, how was it? Fine. <laughs> oh, what'd you play? I don't know, some tunes. Who, who were they by? I don't know. Is it a march? Uh, maybe. So, so hopefully, so thank you guys for being much more articulate than that, or much more expl explanative. That's not even a word. Explaining more. Uh, and how about a round of applause for our panelists? Alright, so we will see you all in about 12 minutes when we start our concert at, at uh, 3 o'clock. Thanks guys, great work.
Concert by the Met Winds. I'm Rick Wyman. I'll be your host and conductor this afternoon. We began today's concert that we're calling Transformations 
with a wonderful opera overture written by Dame Ethel Smythe that she wrote about a hundred years ago. It's an amazing opera about a community in Cornwall, England that likes to wreck ships off the coast and plunder them. So before we continue now, for a few uh, words of welcome, please welcome the president of NetWinds, Leslie Hansen. Thank you, Rick, and welcome everyone. So nice to see you here on a lovely afternoon. This is the third and final concert of our indoor season here in Lexington at the museum. Believe it or not, we've been performing here for 18 years. So this is truly our home and we're, we're happy to welcome you. There are a couple quick announcements. One, the, our annual festival of bands that we host every year at Historic Vandal Hall has been canceled. Basically, there's a lovely, huge painting in the hall. It stands behind the stage and it's being restored. So we are looking forward to seeing everyone there next year instead. And if you are on our mailing list, you will know this because we send out mailings before each concert. If you're not on our mailing list and you'd like to hear more about our concerts or learn about things like this, please fill out your survey because it includes a, an email address so that we can let you know. For example, this summer when we're playing outdoor concerts, if the weather is inclement, we can let you know so you don't go all the way there and find out it's not happening. So those are the two quick announcements, and hopefully you will enjoy the concert. And again, thank you for coming. We're going to continue now with um, music that I think epitomizes the basic version of the idea of transformation in music. That is the theme and variations that a lot of composers do. And I was thinking about this. We've all done this, right? When we walk around our house, whether you know it or not, you've been like a composer. If you've ever walked around going and singing like a little song and then messing with it, like, Mary had a little lamb, yeah, little lamb, yeah, little lamb. Or maybe then when you're you know, family's not there, you get in the shower and you go, Mary <laughs> Or maybe you go, mm, Mary had a little lamb. Those are variations that you're creating on well-known songs. And that's the basis of how many composers do that. Now, that's what I think makes us human in some ways, and that's why I want to hear music that is composed and created by people, not AI, because AI can sort of do that too, right? But these variations are what really makes music creative and fun. And this piece that we're going to play now is by the Dean of American Music, um, Aaron Copeland. And this is his variations on a popular Shaker song, the Shaker song being Simple Gifts. I think many of you know it, and this has uh, connections with, uh, if you're familiar with the Shakers, you know, they have these communities that formed uh, their own little ice, um, uh, heaven on earth, if you will, in little communities around America. And there was one here in Massachusetts, Hancock, Massachusetts. You've perhaps been to the Hancock Shaker Village. But this is the theme and variations on simple gifts. It's the gift to be simple, it's the gift to be free. And then we see what happens uh, as Copeland varies that through the course of this. It's originally appeared in, in uh, Martha Graham's Appalachian Spring dance piece.
So now we continue with a piece that I think takes this idea of variations to a whole other level. Now, first of all, there is a number of Massachusetts connections with this piece because it was written by Michael Gandolfi, who uh, grew up in Massachusetts. He was born and raised in Melrose. He went to New England Conservatory right here in Boston, and now he teaches at uh, New England Conservatory as well as Tanglewood, teaches composition. So this piece um, is divided, it's about 15 minutes, and it has basically seven variations in, in, divided into three sections. Basically, there's a, a Renaissance theme. Uh, Dave, could you just give us this original theme? Perfect. And then he takes it from there and starts messing with it. Uh, in the first place, you'll just hear it, and he calls, then a first variation, he calls it a cubist kaleidoscope. And when he's referring to cubist here, he means cubist painting, where you take various features of the original, and you fragment it, and frame it, and juxtapose it, sort of like you're looking through something in a kaleidoscope in various ways, in the way that certain things get amplified. Then, his variation two, he calls it cantus and augmentation speed demon. Um, this is where the notes of the original theme that you just heard here are elongated, so each of those notes sound for a long time as sort of an underpinning background. Um, to speed demon, speedy notes on lines that sound over the top, usually in the clarinets. Let's hear a little bit of what that sounds like. Clarinets at bar 107. Idea. The clarinets are the speed demon with all that stuff over the top of the melody underneath. Then we get to the second part with a section he calls Carnival. Then it's a section variation four that he calls Tunes in the Round. In other words, the tune gets traded around in a syncopated sort of way, but in a round. So a group of instruments play it, then another group of instruments play it. Let me show you how that part sounds. Uh, band bar three, three, four. <laughs> So you'll hear that about halfway through the piece. Then soon after that is a section he calls Spike, where the melody happens, but you hear all these flourishes, but then there are whips in the back. So when you hear the whip playing, you'll recognize the Spike section. Then he gets to the last part, part three, to a cool part called Rewind Fast Forward. In other words, here he reflects on some of the music that's already been heard and alternates that by hinting at music that's um, from the upcoming dream segment um, and alternates back and forth. And then the final section that takes us through, out through the end, he calls Echoes a Surreal Surprise. And this is where you'll hear echoes of the previous melodies, but in a dreamlike environment and repeated notes underneath. And this is where you get to sort of a modern day, almost minimalist approach to this tune that was from hundreds of years ago that had started 15 minutes ago in the piece. So, enjoy this flourishes and meditations on a Renaissance theme by Michael Gandolfi.
We continue now with a patriotic march, written almost a hundred years ago. We dedicated it to all of us um, by Henry Phil Lawrence, all Americans, we. We're going to dedicate this march to one of our longtime, uh, over 20 years, members of the band, uh, Bob Mingolelli, who's playing, he's about to retire from the Netherlands. He's playing one of his last concerts, and it has a lot of good trumpet licks in it. So I would have a round of applause for Bob and one of his final <laughs> So here's American Sweet, dedicated to Bob and all of us.
McFadden, who's been our wonderful piccolo player in the band for a while, and she's been our assistant director for a couple of years. She recently moved to Western Massachusetts, became the uh, director of the Smith College Wind Ensemble, and has been accompanying a lot uh, at UMass Amherst. And um, so this will be her last concert conducting with us today, and so we're, we're glad that you're here to see it. We're going to miss her because she's been uh, wonderfully energetic, enthusiastic. She brings high standards to us in the band. Um, and one of the things that's been I've really enjoyed in particular is she's broadened our musical perspective. She's been a champion of music that's been uh, being written and published by uh, composers who are not haven't been well represented in the uh, publishing field and our music composition field. She's been involved in a Mexican repertoire initiative that's been commissioning a lot of uh, composers from Mexico to write uh, music for band that we've enjoyed playing here. So we're going to miss all of this. And ladies and gentlemen, to um, share with you a little bit about this last piece and to conduct uh, the final piece on this first half of the concert, please welcome Megan McFadden. Thank you everyone so much, um, and thank you really to the Metwins. It's been an extraordinary pleasure to get to conduct this group over the past couple of years. Um, as I'm sure you can imagine, it was a bittersweet uh, decision, but the drive back and forth from Amherst on Wednesday nights has become a bit much, and especially as I have a, um, as of today, six-year-old son at home who I like to spend a little bit more time with. Um, so, also really excited to um, do this next piece as I'm realizing my score is not on the podium. Let's take care of that now. Um, I, when Rick and I were talking about the music for this uh, this season, he just this was a year and a half ago now. I put um, a list of about 20 pieces together that I thought would be uh, fun to conduct and. Rick came back and he said, you know, I'm looking at the next spring concert will be about transformations. And this piece, Blow It Up, Start Again, seems like it re might really work for a concert about transformations. And I think he's absolutely right. The piece um, makes a note of a very short program note from the composer that says, when the system isn't working, do what Guy Fox did and go anarchist. Blow it up and start again. And whether I think all of us can on some level identify with the feeling of being frustrated with a, a system, a tradition, a hierarchy, a whatever, where we feel like ah, change isn't working, we just gotta level the whole thing and start again. And the piece takes really kind of de extreme demands on the performers to kind of get the point across to you uh, in terms of musically, this idea of breaking everything down and building it back up again. We've had a lot of fun playing it. It's a really fun piece, and we hope you enjoy Blow It Up, Start Again by Jonathan Newman.
Welcome back to the second half. We are really excited because we've got some student guests who are joining us for these, uh, the second half of the concert. We have some middle schoolers who are sitting with the band now. We're really excited to play um, Susan March with, uh, with them now. This is Liberty Bell. This is, um, I picked this march in part because it's in 6-8, or the triple field, which sometimes is not as common as the duple field march, the two field march. And uh, sometimes it's a little hard to do, but the other thing that is really cool is that the Marine Band has been releasing all these performance editions of Sousa marches. And what that means is they've been writing out the marches in the way that the Sousa Band would really play them, which was not always exactly as they were on the page. So I thought it would be fun for our guests to experience that a bit as well. And the story about how this march came about or how it got its title is kind of cool. In the late 1800s, he had written it as part of a big uh, operetta that he was working on called The Devil's Deputy. But then the funding for the whole thing fell through, so he had this march that he kind of liked, didn't know what to do with, and then his manager was at this big exhibition in Chicago, um, this patriotic thing, and the final thing in the show was a big backdrop came down and had the Liberty Bell on it. And the manager said, hey, why don't you call that march Liberty Bell? Put some big bell clangs in there, call it Liberty Bell, and you're good to go. So that's how this Liberty Bell march got its name.
continue now with music written by English composer, British composer, Adam Gore. He wrote it about 20 years ago. He calls it his little tango music. He calls it a short sequence of melodies that are inspired by the curvaceous, melancholic, and dangerous dance from Argentina. <laughs> this is the tango. And he highlights here three approaches to the tango that you might find in music. First is uh, along the lines of that famous habanera that you would hear from Bizet's Carmen. Dun, 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 dun. Then in the middle, there's an approach that might be a little bit more of an Americanized, light jazz style that you might hear uh, in the music from Kurt Weill, Three Penny Opera, and so on. And then the final is the seductive and violent approach uh, that you might hear along the lines of the most famous tango musician, Astor Piazzolla. Here's a little tango music.
few guests. You guys are great. Thanks so much. Well, if you'll just bear with us for a minute as we pause and switch in our other guests that are going to come up and play. Um, so this next piece we're going to play is by Charles Ives, who is another one of those composers that personifies Americana, particularly New England. He was one of these uh, people that lived in New England, and he didn't even want to um, rely on music for his living, so he worked as an insurance salesman, so that nobody could tell him what to do with the music. He didn't want any publisher saying, no, that music's too weird or anything like that. Um, this collection of songs that we're going to play is called Old Home Days. He wrote a bunch of songs that are published as 114 songs, with an amazing variety and scope. And this is an arrangement of a number of those songs for Ben. Um, the first one is a waltz. It's um, Annie, his girl named Annie. It's her festive wedding at the old dance ground. Um, then there's a section, a song called The Opera House, which portrays a, a youth expectantly awaiting the start of an opera. Then that leads outside to a march along Main Street behind the village band. It's even written into the music some of those peculiarities you might hear in a typical uh, village band. In other words, they might not be perfectly together, for example. Then, this is my favorite, it's called The Collection, and it portrays a typical New England small church. Um, I just grew up in Danbury, which was a, a, smaller, a smaller town at the time, Danbury, Connecticut. So this portrays, and I'm, I keep telling the band, it portrays about a 90-year-old organist playing for The Collection in church. <laughs> And then a 95-year-old woman who's been the soloist in the uh, church for about 70 years stands up and sings the solo proudly with a wide vibrato, as you might uh, remember sometimes happens in those situations. That will be portrayed by uh, Mark on the trumpet back there. Um, and then that leads into a slow march. This is also one of my favorites because this is something that Ives wrote when he was 14 years old. And it's a slow march that he wrote to uh, memorialize his family's pet that had just passed away. And the words, which you won't hear, are, one evening just at sunset, we laid him in the grave, although a humble animal, his heart was truly brave. So hopefully you can uh, feel the feel of that when you do it. And then the final movement of this, which to me is exactly, I programmed it here in keeping with the title, Transformations for this concert. It's his take on London Bridge is falling down. And there's even one part in this where he writes in, and it, it's hard to pull off, he writes in the music in such a way that the melody is intentionally a little off from the accompaniment. And uh, it's one of the many ways that he messes with London Bridge. So I hope you enjoy Old Home Days by Charles Ives. More importantly, is we're just welcoming our high school guests. So how about a round of applause for all our teachers? Thank you. 
we, before we conclude today's concerts, we want to thank you all so much for joining us today. It's been our absolute pleasure to play for you. And thank you to all the students who have joined us today, high school students here, middle school students there. How about a big round of applause for them? We hope you'll join us for our next concerts. We will not be playing the Festival of Bands on June 8th, as Leslie mentioned, that's been canceled, but we hope you'll join us for our summer concerts outside at Hastings Park in Lexington on Thursday nights, July 11th, 18th, and 25th. The 11th, we'll do a Sousa Spectacular. The 18th, is uh, title is Water Music, and then on the 25th is Showtime. All of those concerts are at 7.30, Thursday nights at Hastings Park, right here in Lexington, so we hope you'll join us. Each of those concerts are free, and they are brought to us, uh, to you, uh, by the band with financial support from sponsors that uh, sponsor each concert. It's only $250 to sponsor a concert, and so if you or a business or anyone you know who's interested in being an official concert sponsor for one of our summer concerts, please let us know, and here's what comes with that. You get to conduct Stars and Stripes on uh, the concert that you sponsor, including a free conducting lesson with yours truly prior to the concert. That's worth a thousand dollars. I'm joking, not really. Um, but it's fun, so we hope you can uh, participate in that and or join us for those concerts. I also want to let you know that uh, the band, in conjunction with this, uh, our support of students, we um, provide a scholarship to a student who's going off to music school next year, and that scholarship winner has been recently selected and she'll be presented that scholarship at one of those summer, summer concerts, and that scholarship is in the memory of Murray Bernstein, who, Bernstein, who was a member of this band for many years, and so um, it's a legacy gift um, from Murray to support students as they go on to music. So, we close today's concert called Transformations with this piece called Meta March. And it uh, really is a meta march in that he takes three familiar marches, two of them you've heard today, uh, Americans We, Liberty Bell, plus also um, National Emblem. And he kind of reworks those melodies, quotes them, mashes them up, twists them up in all kinds of fun ways in this meta march. It keeps us on our toes, and hopefully it'll keep you on your toes as you try to identify snippets of those marches. So we close now with Steve Bryant's meta march. Thanks again for joining us. Thank you.